Hello friends, Jay Todd here from Las Vegas with my good friend, David Hasselhoff. And here's what's happening this week in gambling. This week in gambling. This Week in Gambling has been brought to you by Gala Casino. Big on land, now big online. With more games, more promotions, and more bonuses than ever before. 200% welcome bonus, cash back, and deposit bonuses. Visit galacasino.com. Hello, my friends, and welcome to This Week in Gambling. Jay Todd here, coming to you from the Global Gaming Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm down here gathering lots of great material, good interviews, meeting lots of interesting people, including David Hasselhoff. Yeah, you probably notice I opened the show with David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff is a great guy. David Hasselhoff is funny, and David Hasselhoff is very good looking. David Hasselhoff also offered me $2 for every time I'd mention David Hasselhoff on this program. So, David Hasselhoff, racking up the dough. <laughs> All right, my friends, we got a, an interesting show for you today. We got a couple of guests on. I'm going to start with something everyone down here is talking about, and that is the coming regulation of online gambling in the United States. It's inevitable, everyone knows it, you can feel it, there's excitement about it all over the place. But one of the, the biggest aspects to online gambling is something you might not even be considering yet, and that is mobile gaming. That's using your phone or your, your, your pad, your, 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 your little touchpad thing. Any type of mobile device that connects to the internet is, can, can be considered a mobile device, and believe it or not, there's coming a day when you're going to be able to pull out your iPhone and play slots sitting on a train going to work in the morning for real money. Yeah, this brings up the interesting question of regulating mobile devices. Because sure, I mean, you know, if you're in a state and you're on a computer in your house, well, people know where you are, right? But if you're on a mobile device, you could, you know, get on an airplane in one state and, you know, land in another, right? And, and just fire up the phone and start playing slots again. What would prevent this from happening? Or, you know, who would the taxes go to? These are all very legitimate questions. So I caught up today with Mr. Rip Garber, the CEO of Locade. Yes, I wanted to make sure I got that right. They specialize in this sort of stuff. It's a fascinating conversation. Here's what he had to say. Hello, friends. Jay Todd here. I've caught up with Rip Gerber, the CEO of Locade. And if you don't know what that is, well, you might be using one of his products in the future. If you're a player, uh, then you know that gaming is moving towards regulation. And when regulation hits, we're going to be able to play wherever we want, even on our mobile devices. Well, that brings up an interesting problem, doesn't it? it about where you are and what jurisdiction you're in. And that's where this gentleman comes in. Can you tell the players out there a little sure. bit about how your company works with mobile devices and gambling? Sure. Well, um, Locate is the company. We're a location as a service platform that casinos and operators use to locate a device like this. This is a smartphone and I have on it a couple of applications, for example, one from Cantor. Sportsbook. Okay. So let's say I'm, I'm, uh, I'm too tired to go down to the sports book to place a bet because I'm convinced the Redskins are going to win the Super Bowl with, with RG3, right? right? So I can sit here any, anywhere in the city, actually anywhere in the state of Nevada, and place a bet on my smartphone. Our location technology authenticates that bet. Now, I can't fly back to San Francisco. It won't work. My location will say, hey, he's out of the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. Shuts it down. Well, if you're in San Francisco placing a bet on the Redskins, you might get killed anyway. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm also placing a bet on the Niners to win. So I'm going to... Oh, I'm well, gonna, you're going to, you, you know, what, uh, what's it called? Hedging, hedging your yeah, bets, exactly, right? Exactly. Okay, and you can use your mobile device... Uh, guy. All right, you can use your mobile device to do that in the state of Nevada, and with this guy's technology, they know where you are. It's the future of gaming, folks, right here. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. on. Okay, thanks right. a lot. All right, we'll be right back with more news, sports, and David Hasselhoff. Yeah, David Hasselhoff. Now bring in the Twig logo. Oh, I just love Spa Day. Don't 
you love getting pampered. Okay, what's up? What's going on? I have been looking all over for you. Right. So glad I found you guys. There are consequences for breaking the code. Report friends and learn more at visitlasvegas.com. Hey, my friends, welcome back. We got some industry news to get to here, so let's cover it. You know, a couple weeks back, I was telling you guys that there is a rumor going around that at some point during the upcoming lame duck session of Congress that uh, there's going to be some online poker legislation uh, attempted to, to be pushed through. This put together by uh, Senators Reed and Kyle. Uh, when I mentioned it, I told you that, that I wouldn't really hold my breath about this because I just don't see it happening. A and I still don't because in today's news, there's uh, more opposition to this bill, this time coming from tribal gaming. You see, uh, if this bill got pushed through, there apparently is some uh, verbiage in there that says tribal gaming, uh, what they're allowed to do would be dependent upon the state that they're in and that state agreeing with the federal legislation. And, you know, tribes are independent sovereign nations, and I just cannot see them going along with something like this where they have to almost ask permission to do what they've already been doing for many years. Also in the news, Shuffle Master has changed their name to S. HFL Entertainment. That's S H F L. I'll put it down there so you can see it's it's uh, shuffle. Yeah, but S H F L Entertainment. So good for them. Yeah. And and lastly, Sporting Bet has rejected an offer from William Hill to buy them up. Yeah, they they wanted uh, to pay about five hundred and sixty-five <coughs> million dollars. And uh, Sporting Bet said that's just not enough. They, the exact term was significantly undervalued. Yeah, $565 million. All right. I, I hear the deal would have gone through if William Hill would have agreed to toss in a copy uh, of the Beatles' White Album, an original copy. But William Hill just wasn't going to part with that. <laughs> All right. Now it's time for a, a sports betting update. Yeah. So here is one of my great friends, Peter Loshak from SBR Forums, the man with one glass eye, and I bet you can't tell which one's real. Thanks, Jay. Well, I don't quite get that joke, but my sense of humor and everything else takes a back seat when it's high season in the sports betting world, which it is right now. I actually have 90% of my brain function at all times earmarked for sports betting during the high season, and everything else has to make do with splitting up the remaining 10%. Right now, of course, we're in the heart of football season, heading into week six of college football and week five of the NFL. So far, the sports books have had a relatively good year, and the public, which cleaned up last year, is getting beat. The public usually wins when uh, the big public favored teams in college repeatedly cover week after week, and when the big public backed teams in the NFL cover their teaser spreads. This year, though, that hasn't happened enough to turn the public into winners as it did last year. Aside from football, we also have the baseball regular season ending and the playoffs starting on October 5th. There will probably be some good value with playoff series lines and futures when they're released in the next few days. And then, of course, a lockout is looming in the NFL will deprive NHL bettors of their early season betting opportunities. To bettors who specialize in the NHL, that's going to hurt since the NHL has long been known as one of the most profitable sports betting opportunities for savvy bettors. Also, all the world's major soccer leagues are in full swing right now, attracting huge betting action all over the world. And we even have a UFC coming up on October 13th, which is sure to attract a ton of attention since it's featuring Anderson Silva on the main card. Silva's right now being given about a 90% chance of beating his opponent, Stefan Bonner. And then there's even a big horse race coming up this weekend, the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe which is a mile and a half turf race in France, and it has the third biggest turf race, turf race purse in the world behind the Melbourne Cup and the Japan Cup. And that's what's on tap the next few weeks in the sports betting world, Jay. So David, I, I just want to thank you for being on the show, first of all. Uh, I, quick question, who was harder to work with, Kit or Pamela Anderson? Um, I think it's probably uh, quite easy to work with both of them. I, um, Kit was great because um, he would never really talk back. It was a car, as you know. And uh, Pamela was lovely to work with. 
And they both had great headlights. Yes, they did. <laughs> hey, you were warned.